The PS5 tech specs name drops so many acronyms and throws around so many numbers that they can leave us lay people with our heads spinning. We're going to go into detail about the PlayStation 5's main specs, what they mean in the plainest English we can articulate, and how they compare to the PS4 and the Series X and S. CPU The central processing unit for a console is essentially a calculator, transforming all instructions from the device's software into information a human can understand. The PS5 CPU is based on an AMD Zen 2 which clocks up to 3.5 GHz, a big upgrade from the PS4's Jaguar CPU which runs at 1.6 GHz. It's got 8 cores and 16 threads. The Series X's CPU is also a custom Zen 2 with 8x cores at 3.8 GHz, and the Series S's Zen 2 is 3.6 GHz, and both the Series X and S drop by 0.2 GHz with SMT enabled. And so, its CPUs are comparable to the PS5's, and might be slightly more powerful. As they are both custom builds, it's hard to tell, as one may run more efficiently than the other despite specs. We'd have to play several sets of the same games on both consoles to truly compare. GPU and Teraflops Before we talk about next-gen GPUs, we have to define teraflops. We'll start with the name. Tera means trillion, and so just as a terabyte is one trillion bytes, a teraflop is one trillion flops, or floating point operations per second. As you know, games are not static images, but moving parts, and the moving parts need to be animated on the fly depending on what you do as the player so that the game files are not infinitely large. Games are preloaded with flops so that your GPU can calculate and animate your choices as you go. A console with more teraflops means more calculations can be made in real time as you play, giving you and the game more visual options in the graphical sense and makes games run smoother, faster, and gives more frame rate options for greater visual clarity. And now, onto the graphics processing unit, aka video card, aka graphics card, aka GPU. The GPU is composed of the hardware equivalent of thousands of hyper-fast mathematicians performing millions of speedy calculations calculations simultaneously to enable the console to render graphics, empowering games to look as pretty as they do. The PS5 runs an RDNA 2-based GPU with 56 CUs up to 2.23 GHz, and it runs at 10.3 teraflops or 10.3 trillion floating point operations per second. The original PS4 did 1.84 teraflops, and the PS4 Pro did 4.2. The Series X's GPU also runs a custom RDNA 2 GPU with 52 CUs at 1.825 GHz and boasts 12.15 teraflops, Microsoft's largest claim to performance superiority fame. The Series S's RDNA 2 will run at 20 CUs at 1.565 GHz and will have only 4 teraflops. Both machines will utilize ray tracing technology, a more accurate graphical interpretation of how rays of light move in real life. You can see the difference here in Monster Killer Rook's PC version of GTA 5 when he turns the ray tracing feature on. RAM Random Access Memory, or RAM, is the machine's working memory. It's where information is stored before processing, similar to a human being's short-term memory. The next-gen PlayStation has 16 GB of GDDR6 RAM at 448 GB per second, double that of the PS4's 8 GB of GDDR5 RAM, which utilizes 176 GB per second in comparison. The Series X's RAM is pretty much the same as the PS5's, and the Series S packs 10 GB of GDDR6 RAM. Damn. Custom SSD Solid-state drives are the latest consumer-friendly storage option, an upgrade from hard drives. While hard drives have moving parts, are larger, and kind of look like record players on the inside as it actually writes information into an actual disk, an SSD uses flash memory, which comes in a tighter, more feng shui package and has no moving parts. Neat, huh? The PS5 will have an 825GB PCIe solid-state drive, 325 gigabytes bigger than the PS4's mechanical hard drive, the SSD's seek time for info will drop from 2 to 50 milliseconds for the PS4 to zero, and functions with a bandwidth 50 times larger than its predecessor at 5 gigabytes per second. This is the perfect solution for the I want it now or I want it never generation, as contemporary players can dive into games faster, and devs won't have to spend precious minutes creating clever load screens. Yes.
because you're terrible. The Series X's SSD is larger at a full terabyte, is a custom NVMe SSD, and boasts the same feature that you will almost never have to wait for a game to load. The Series S's SSD is 512 gigabytes. Once you get used to the speed of these machines, the comparatively slow load times on old consoles might make you scream a little. <gasps> Disk Drive. The full-size PS5 will play Ultra HD Blu-rays, which hold up to 100 gigabytes of info on the discs themselves, and can slam up to 100 gigabytes per second of information. That means bigger games with more content. You'll also be able to watch 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray discs and dance with 2020's Best Actor winner on both the PS5 and the Series X. What's next? These machines were made to future-proof themselves and force game developers to play catch-up to fill out the hardware. It's the games that have barely started developing, the GTA 6s and the God of War Ragnaroks, that will really start to push the tech to its max. What do you focus on when you think about the PS5? Is it the GPU? CPU? Is it just an overall feeling? Do you understand teraflops better than us at The Gamer? Please explain them to us in the comments down below. And like and subscribe for more of our content. Live long and prosper.